All right, y'all, what's going on? It's Combo Breaker 99. I am back with another post-fight analysis video. All right, y'all, let's go back to Saturday night's co-main event, Carlos Sparza versus Zhang Wei Li. Zhang Wei Li, once again, is a champion, a two-time champion. Shout out to Zhang Wei Li, making the right improvements and wanting to test those improvements against a wrestler like Carlos Sparza. Wei Li, she wanted the submission. She got the submission. She really wanted to showcase those levels on the ground and showcase her grappling skills. She kept bringing that up in interviews that she wanted to out-wrestle out -wrestle the wrestler as well as get the submission win over Carla Sparza, which to me I thought was dangerous given that Carla Sparza, she is, you know, a high-level wrestler. Uh, giving Carla Sparza too much of a fighting chance, I, I saw it going two ways. If Wei Li was too strong on the ground, I could have seen it playing out like Tatiana Suarez being that type of a dom dominant finish. But if Carla's timing and top control was effective, I could have seen Wei Li win, but in a close decision type of fashion. But no, nah, man, Wei Li, she was too skilled on the feet, too skilled on the ground. Quick, nice transitions to Carla's back. She easily locked in a nice rear naked choke in round two to grab the belt, man. I, I was impressed. I was really impressed. She definitely made the right changes to her game plan um, and just her overall regimen, doing what's necessary, doing what's necessary to become a complete fighter. You know, I got to give her a lot of respect for that. Um, going back to round one, Whaley right away, she was fighting well off. She was fighting well off a jab. You know, she was fighting well behind her jab, applying a lot of pressure on Carla Sparza. Also using those inside leg kicks to back Carla up. Carla, to me, right away, you could see the speed difference. Her striking was looking very slow every time she would just kind of step in with those left and rights. Uh, it was easy for Wei Li to see those shots coming and just step back and make a quick reset and apply pressure again. Carla, she did get off like one stiff jab on Wei Li, but overall, Wei Li's combinations and her pressure was just keeping Carla honest here. Uh, Wei Li's jab, it was opening up some nice body kicks and some strikes up top. And her control in the center of the octagon, to me, it was solid. It was solid all the way around. You know, Carla Sparza, she could not get to the center of the octagon. You know, Wei Li was really uh, taking command of the cage. Uh, when she started to flick out those light punches, Carla didn't really know what to expect. So as she went on the back foot towards the cage, you know, as her back went to the cage, she ate a big right hand, followed up with two head kicks. And right there, I was like, oh, Wei Li's about to get a finish. Wei Li's about to get a finish when she hit those two head kicks off on Carla. But Carla, she did the smart thing, went in for the takedown, so I thought. But then, Wei Li invited it. You know, as she was going for the takedown, she invited it, and she got the back right off top on Carla Sparza with a nice scramble and showed who the stronger, quicker grappler was. You know, Carla, she wanted to lock in that headlock as well on the ground. When Carla uh, had got Wei Li down, she, like, tried to lock in a headlock. But Wei Li broke free. I mean, she broke free with the quickness. So Carla, she tried to get that top control, but Wei Li wasn't happy. I mean, you can see how strong her hips are every time she would try to get that push off. And just the leg strength as well was too much for Carla. So as Carla had to get back up, Wei Li went back to the feet. But then Wei Li takes it back down, gets that top position on Carla, lands some heavy ground and pound on Carla Sparza. So right here, the fight was looking a little competitive, but you could really see it going into the uh, favor of Wei Li because of the strength and just how quick she was on the ground. I don't think Carla was expecting her to be that fast um, on the ground as well, you know, making those transitions. Uh, going into the second round, Wei Li applying more pressure, fighting off the jab still, landing those inside leg kicks. You could already see the inside of um, Carla's lead leg turn, turning red. Uh, Carla, she really couldn't get anything off on the feet, so she kind of panicked, shoots in for another takedown. And as Wei Li gets to back again, I, I'm like, uh-oh, she's going for that reverse cru crucifix like she did in the first round. But Wei Li quickly turned it into a rear naked choke. But Carla, she was able to fight it off for a while. It looked like she was, you know, going to stay calm and she was going to get out of it, maybe turn into the guard and get on top of Wei Li. Uh, you know, she was controlling the left hand. But the minute she let that left wrist go with the quickness, Wei Li, she locked it in and Carla tap. I mean, Carla tap with the quickness. It, was just, it just caught me off guard, like, because I've seen Carla in these positions before. But that just showcased how strong and how quick Wei Li was and you know just her overall submission game has improved like the way she had half of it locked in with her right arm and as the left wrist was in, uh, being controlled by Carla you could see like the minute she was going to let it go boom she was going to get it and the position that she had Carla in was just kind of awkward so she didn't really have a chance to turn into the guard as well when I went back and looked at it so yeah man like you could see like the improvement in her submission game as well. So yeah, man, I was I was just overall impressed. I was really impressed with uh, Zhang Wei Li's transitions on the ground. Like I said, I didn't see Zhang Wei Li winning this fight by submission because you know I still had to give Carla Sparza a lot of credit. And like Zhang Wei Li said, this was the first wrestler that she was dealing with. So I didn't think that she wanted to spend too much time on the ground 
you know, I thought she was going to have her moments, you know, try to get some takedowns and try to maul Carla a little bit. But I could have seen her finishing on the feet more so. Or if she did finish on the ground, maybe, you know, finish Carla with like a full mount and some ground and pound, something like that. But with the way Carla Sparza um, handled the strength in this fight and just really looked kind of frustrated, man, it just... It just all it just all started to fall into place with Zhang Weili, you know. Just whenever uh, you you first saw her like break out of the, break out of that headlock that Carla Sparza had, I was like, uh oh, you know, Carla's gonna be in for it now because Zhang Weili, she's looking comfortable in the ground and she's inviting these takedowns and you know she's wanting to spend time down here on the ground. So the more and more as it played out, minute after minute, I was like, okay, yeah, maybe a submission can come, but I was still going for that TKO. You know, I wanted to see her go in there and just really you know, put on some dominant work just to kind of get that crowd going again because we need another entertaining strawweight title fight, right? But overall, it was still a good finish. It was still a good finish for me. Um, I really wanted to see Whaley step out of the box and do something different. Um, so yeah, man, I think with this uh, second title win for Zhang Whaley, I think she's really going to show us how prepared she is now, how well prepared she is for uh, whatever styles are to come. Not just training physically, but... um. I like how she's kind of opening her mind to how you expand on being a complete fighter, you know, just just really stepping out of the box. I think, you know, what she's been doing over the past year, a year and a half now has really been good for. Her. Uh, I think Whaley winning this belt is good in the business sense for the UFC, for the strawweight division. Um, also for the entertainment side, you know, Carla Sparza, her style's not very crowd pleasing. And, you know, everybody's still kind of um, looking back at that uh, rematch with her and Rose. So, I think it was good that the belt did change champions for now, you know, because uh, Zhang Weili, she's bringing a lot to the game right now. You know, she's bringing that work ethic that a lot of pe people can follow. And again, just the entertainment value that she's bringing, you know, not just the people that she's bringing from her country, but uh, just the overall uh, energy that she brings that brings a lot of people together. You know, they want to see this type of style. They want to see this type of entertaining fighter in there. So I think it's still good that uh, Zhang Weili did get the belt. Um, Saturday night. Uh, so yeah, man, from here, um, uh, Zhang Wei Li, uh, now that she's got this belt again, I'd like to see her in there with, uh, any of these top, top five fighters, any of these top five fighters. But the one name I'll say is Amanda Lemos. Definitely want to see that fight next. Like I told y'all, Amanda Lemos is going to climb this ladder and eventually you would see her and Zhang Wei Li meet up, uh, whether it's going to be a title eliminator or for the belt, you're going to see this fight, and I think this is going to be the next one to make. Um, as for Carlos Sparza, still a good fighter, still a good fighter. Uh, she's going down as one of the pioneers of the strawweight division. Uh, can she climb back to the top? I'm not sure. I think it all depends on how the UFC moves her now and how they match her up. Like, are they going to make her fight down from here? You know, are they going to make her, let her fight up? You know, I don't know. I kind of think they might make her fight down just to avoid getting her in that position for another title shot, right? Because they might not want to see that type of style. It's not crowd pleasing to them, right? Um, and also it's just a tough division. You know, it's evolving. The bigger and stronger these ladies are, it's going to be a tough task for Carlos Sparza to climb back to the top because go back to her six fight win streak. She did it. She could possibly do it again, but a lot of those fights were close now. And like I said, with the way people are not in favor of her style, Whenever it comes back to those close decisions now, the judges might start, you know, making the fights go the other way. I'm just saying they might start doing that. Right. But when it comes down to it as well, like physically, Carlos Sparza is just going to have a tough task. Yeah, she's good on the ground, but she's limited with her striking, her size and her strength. So, you know, as, like I said, as these girls get bigger and they start to evolve, they'll be able to just kind of neutralize Carlos Sparza in the future. So those close decisions, they might just be a thing of the past, you know, with with, with what she's dealing with in the cage as well as outside of the cage. Because like I said, those judges, they might start making that decision go the other way now because they don't want to see that type of style in there again, right? But yeah, man, shout out to Zhang Wei Li, uh, two-time champion now. She's ready to get it. Like I said, for me, I would like to see a Lamos fight, which I'll talk about more in another video, guys. But let me know what y'all thought of this one. This is a good finish for her, good way to finish off the year. Combo Breaker 99, I'm out. Subscribe, peace.